So in the previous video, we went over the three player single selector method. In this one, we'll be going over the n player single selector method. So for just an arbitrary n amount of people, how do you do this method? So before we do that, um, I wanted to go over two kind of key questions that we didn't cover in the previous video. And the first one is, why should the dividers divide evenly? So we had two pieces like this in the middle of the last game, the three player game where I think this one belonged to piece, uh, person A and this one belonged to person B. And now at this point, their task was to divide it into three equal pieces and C was going to come in and choose one piece each. Now, when I said they have to divide into three equal pieces, really the rule of the game is divide into three pieces, period. But let's see why it's to their advantage to divide into three equal pieces. Let's say A didn't do that. Let's say A said, well, I want to make sure I get the biggest slice. So he let's say he splits into three pieces like the rule like the game says he must except he puts most of his value all does designated by a huge dollar sign in this piece and he puts a little bit of value in this slice a little bit of value in this slice now if c chooses one of these smaller slices that's great for a because he's getting this large piece right here but what if c comes and takes this huge dollar slice then he's just left with these two little ones so he wants to and same thing with a and b they both want to split into evenly as possible so that the value of each piece is split between the three slices uh, because they don't know C's value system, they don't know what C's going to pick. So they want to do it evenly, which is why, in the end, they will end up dividing evenly. Now, the second question we want to answer is, why does the selector, in this three-player game at least, get a fair share? Well, let's look at this drawing again. So this was the two pieces, um, and we said the value of the pizza was $10, but let's just say it's some arbitrary, you know, V dollars. So the pizza is worth V dollars. Now, C... He, he has these two slices to look at. And so this piece is worth A dollars and this worth B dollars. And A plus B equals V because this is the whole pizza. So this value plus this value must equal the total value of the pizza. Now, um, A and B both divide their slices evenly. And the reason for that we just saw. So now they have divided evenly. So now uh, this piece, this piece, and this piece, let's call this A1, A2, a3, we'll call this B1, B2, B3. And A1 plus A2 plus A3 equals A. B1 plus B2 plus B3 equals B. And now let's look at a little nuance that kind of helps us see why uh, C is getting a fair share in this game. So A, let's now we're looking at C's value system. Pretend we're C, okay? So now all these values we're looking at in terms of C. Now A1 is how much of A? So that fraction is how much? Well, it could be one-third, it could be less than one-third, it could be greater than one-third. So let's say for a second it's less than one-third. Now let's say A2. Let's say A2 over A is also less than one-third. What does that mean for A3 over A? That has to be greater than one-third because these three have to add up to one. Because if you add these up, then the numerator is going to be A1 plus A2 plus A3, which is just A, and the denominator is A, so they have to add up to one. So if these first two are both less than one-third, then this must be greater than one-third to compensate for that. So in the in that case, he'll choose this one because that's the most valuable for him. And of course, there's other scenarios as well. They could all be equal to one-third, in which case he would just choose whatever uh, one he wants. So remember, we're looking at C's value system here. So if they're all equal to one-third, he would just choose whichever one he wants. Uh, they're all the same. But if even one is not one-third, then it's either greater than one-third or less than one-third. So if it's greater than one-third, then that becomes a candidate for a piece he would choose. If it's less than one-third, then this kind of distribution property says that some other piece must be greater than one-third to compensate for that. So we see that no matter what, he's going to have a piece over here that is more than one-third or equal to one-third the value of A. So he's getting greater than one-third A, and for the same reason he's getting greater than one-third B, I should say greater than or equal to, and if you add these two up, then you're getting one-third A plus one-third B, so that's going to be A plus B over three, and A plus B was said was V, so this is V over three, so he's getting greater than or equal to V over three, and since the total value of the pizza is V for everybody, V dollars, and he's getting more than or equal to a third of that, that is a fair share. So this is why, uh, kind of mathematically, he's getting a fair share. And A and B are getting a fair share for, well, we'll see that reason right now. So now let's go to the N player single selector method. So here I've just drawn a couple players. Um, so there's just a random N amount of players. And they each have their preferences in the speech bubbles. It doesn't really matter what they are right now. So now let's go into a little bit of math and see why this method works and how to use it. So how to use it first is pretty simple. So you randomly designate one person as a selector. Let's say this person is a selector, and this person, everyone else just becomes a divider for now. 
And now you set the selector aside. Pretend he doesn't exist. So we're just going to cover him up uh, for now. And so we're going to cover him up. And now you have these other people. So you have these n minus 1 people. And they're going to play simple divider selector game. So now going back to our previous videos, if you haven't watched the divider selector videos, then you should totally, you should uh, definitely watch that. And uh, how you're going to do it is you're going to have this person, this person, this person, this person, this person, all the other people except the selector. They're going to play divider selector. And as we saw in divider selector, everybody ends up getting a fair share. So let's see what's going to happen. So since let's say the total value of the pizza is again V for everybody. That's the dollar value of the pizza. Um, that means each of these n minus one people has how much value after they have their pieces after playing the n minus one player div divider selector. They each have greater than or equal to v over n minus one, and that's how much value they have because they play divider selector. Now, what do they have to do? Now they have to each take their slice and divide it into n pieces. Remember, so going back to the previous video, we had two people playing divider selector, and each of those people has to divide into three pieces. So they have to divide into one more piece um, than the previous amount of people playing. So now they have to divide this into n pieces. So now we have greater than or equal to v over n times n minus 1, and that's the value of each little slice um, of each person's piece. So for example, let's say this was somebody's piece. Let's just say it looked like this. Um, then this piece on its own has a value of greater than or equal to v over n minus 1. Now he has to divide it into n pieces, so he just keeps dividing, keeps dividing, keeps dividing, and each of these individual portions, this 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on portion, each has a value of v over n times n minus 1, and they're all equal in value. And the reason they're equal in value is because of the um, what we just talked about here, why they must divide evenly. So now, each of these little portions has a value of greater than or equal to v over n times n minus 1. So now the selector um, of the game, who we designated here, he values these things at different prices. So as we saw in uh, just this other paper we were looking at, there's n minus 1 slices. And so let's just make a list. Slice 1, slice 2, slice 3, all the way to slice n minus 1. And let's see how much this selector values them at. So let's say he values piece 1 at v1. Dollars. He values piece two at v two dollars, v three dollars, v n minus one dollars, and if you sum all of these individual little v's up, you're gonna get the total value of the pizza because that's the whole pizza. And furthermore, he's gonna take one slice from this v one piece, which has been divided into n slices. So he's gonna get at least one nth of v one. So he's gonna get greater than or equal to v one over n. And for the same reason, he's gonna get greater than or equal to v. 2 over n, and so on. He's going to get greater than or equal to v n minus 1 over n minus, or uh, over n. So now we sum all of these up, and v1 plus v2 plus uh, on and on and on to v n minus 1, we said was v. So he's getting greater than or equal to v over n. And that's exactly a fair share, correct? Because the total value of the pizza is v, and you're breaking into n people, so that's a fair share. Check. Now what about all these other people, all these dividers? Are they also getting a fair share? How can we check that? Well, we just said that each of these little, little tiny pieces that they divided their own shares into is worth v over n times n minus 1. Now one has been taken away. One little piece has been taken away from all of them because that will make up the selector's share. So they're left with how many of these pieces? They're left with n minus 1 of them. So if each piece is worth at least v over n times n minus 1, then n minus 1 such pieces are worth at least v over n. And that is, again, a fair share. So we see that by this method, we everybody gets a fair share in the end. Now the last thing I want to talk about is the merits of this method, uh, disadvantages, advantages over the just the divider selector method. So a clear disadvantage we see right away is that this is going to involve breaking the pizza into many, many, many little slices as you get more and more people. And this could be a this could be a disadvantage, but also um, you could do this theoretically instead of actually cutting the pizza. You could first think about it, uh, like make a little graph. And of course, this uh, this whole series is not just about pizza. It's about more important things we've talked about, like pollution licenses, land rights. So in that case, you're not actually going to take a saw to the land and cut it and then give everybody a little piece. It's going to be done on a map, like graphically. So it could be a disadvantage. But an advantage, um, we can just see that in the three-player case. Here's an advantage. So let's say you have three-player. You have three-player uh, three single selector. Then... In the divider selector case, where we had three players, we could have a conflict, right? Because if there's player 
A, B, and C, and let's say uh, B is the B is chosen as the divider. He's done. But now A and C, remember, have to make their fair share lists. And if their lists have the same slice, then they kind of have to recombine the pieces. They have to give B a slice. Then there's a conflict. In this case, with three players, there can be no conflict because now we just choose one selector. So I'm going to do this in a different color. So now the green designates the single selector. If C is the selector, then A and, the, A and B play the divider-selector game. And with two people playing divider-selector, there can be no conflict. So no conflict. And then C comes in and just chooses one little piece from each of A and B slices. He goes away, and then B and A and B just retain their slices. So there's no conflict in the three-player case. Now, there can be conflict as you go on, because in this case, pretend there were these seven people, then you play six-player divider-selector, and there can be conflict. But you always reduce the chance for conflict by taking one player out of the equation right away. So an advantage of this would be less conflict. So you decide if you want to use this. It is an interesting method.